Hey everybody, it's Pisces Moonbeam, and welcome to Radco Tarot. We are going to do a pick a pile reading for September 13th to 19th, 2020, in regards to your soul connection. This can be a romantic relationship, a love relationship, somebody that you are currently experiencing challenges with. We're going to tap into a bit of their energy and see what's going on with them, and a little bit of spiritual guidance for you in regards to moving forward with this connection. So today we are going to use six different decks that I have over here, and there's three more, sorry, three over there and three over here. Two of these decks are decks that I created, the Faded Love Oracle cards and my new deck. It says the Phases of Love Oracle deck, but the title is called the Love Rush Oracle. Both decks are available for purchase at the link down below, along with my email address. Should you purchase, please send me an email because I have videos that are up to you to use at your discretion explaining how to work with these decks. But these decks are designed for the reader to read intuitively. So with that said, let's get started. We have pile number one, Amazonite, pile number two, Moonstone, and pile number three, Rose Quartz. So go ahead and pick your pile. I wouldn't say to grab the crystal or to go with the crystal that you like the most, but the one that is pulling you in the most for these readings. So if you want to pause the video until you decide, go ahead. You can watch one pile. You can watch more than one. Either way, take what resonates, throw away what doesn't, and thank you for watching in advance. So let's get started. Pile number one, Amazonite. Pile number two, Moonstone. And pile number three, Rose Quartz. So I'm going to move these out of the way. And we're going to start with pile number one. I'm just going to put that up there. So what is the current energy around your person right now? Fishing, searching, and karmic justice. Karma kicks in, balancing the scales, payoffs, and payback. So right away, I'm getting such a strong feeling that your person is feeling not just lost, but at a place in their life where they are really undergoing this deep soul search where they're not playing the field. They're not fishing for better options. They're not looking for a way out, but they are really searching. And this is deep. This is soul searching. For some of you watching this, your person feels like not only are they in the middle of nowhere and don't know what to do next, but they do feel like karma has not been on their side. Or for another group of you, whoever is watching this and you're thinking about somebody who you resonate with, where you feel like they are in this searching mode, they feel like the scales have really been unbalanced in their favor and they're searching for a way to balance the scales. And I feel very strongly, and I probably should have opened up with this, that a lot of people watching this who are thinking about your person or their person, this person is finding a way to balance the scales with you. They're aware that things weren't even and that they did certain things on their end that played a big role in this. And I feel very strongly that somebody in this connection, your person, is searching for a way to balance the scales with you and they might just not know how. So how is this affecting them when it comes to you right now? All right, so we got love clouds, assessing relationship potential. So they're definitely trying to figure this out. They're definitely trying to balance the karma and everything that has been going on. And this is making them question, sorry about the glare, where this can go. Does this relationship have potential? They're, they're searching right now. They're trying to see if everything that you, let me just move this up here. They're trying to see that if everything that they can bring to the table, everything that you can bring to the table can actually work out and unite the both of you, but they're, they're searching and you can see the question marks on these clouds. They are assessing the potential along with the potential of, of balancing the karma here because there has been some injustice in this connection. And how else is this affecting them? What type of energy is currently around them right now in regards to you? Okay, we don't read this deck with reversals. First house, the body. So the first house is all about identity. It's all about who we are. And aside from your body needing to be healthy, the first house is how we act. It's how we assert ourselves. It's how we go after what we want. So this person might be searching uh, along with how to figure out a way to balance this relationship with you and along with searching 
about this relationship potential, they could be just searching within themselves in regards to who they are and where they want to go and what feels right in their body and what feels wrong. And I feel like they really do feel very much lost and very much out of place right now within their own body. And the first house is also about how we take on the world and perhaps their actions and the things they have been doing in the past, whether this is connected to you or not, just hasn't been working out with them. And that's why they feel like karma is not on their side. So I feel like this is really connecting not just them with your relationship, but also the relationship connects them to who they are. And it's forced them to take a very good look at the things they have done up until now in regards to how they come off to the world. So let's just get a couple of cards for guidance in regards to you going forward and what can help you deal with this. What else do you, what else does spirit want you to know? So to the sea, it's all about going with the flow. You might not be able to see exactly where this is going and you might feel very lost right now, but the most important thing for you is to remain patient if you do love this person and want to see where things can go because right now the destination is pretty much unknown. And let's get one more message. Fruition. Okay, so this person definitely does want to try and bring something to fruition. Sorry about that. The glare is just so bad. Somebody does want to bring something to fruition in this connection, but it's going to take a while. You have to allow things to go up and down. You have to allow yourself to go with the flow and follow the waves, not just the waves of the way this is being navigated, but your emotions as well. And the more you can do your best to go with the flow, the sooner you will start to see things come to fruition because this is not in your hands. This is not in their hands. This is a search that they are on. This is a very spiritual search. So the fact that we have this card fruition is very positive because I feel strongly like whoever's watching this, your person does want to bring things to a harvest where they can possibly, you know, pull up the seeds that they had planted with you a long time ago, even though things aren't working right now. But in order for that to happen, and especially if you want that to happen, you have to do your best to go with the flow, even though things are very much up in the air right now. <clears throat> so let's get one more message in regards to love for you. Protection, shaky ground. And let's get one more here. and deep knowing. So you know, and it's important that you listen to your intuition. And if you feel that you need to guard yourself or shield yourself, because this person is currently searching, and while they're searching, they might not be able to give you that shelter or give you that warmth and that comfort that you need. So it's very important to find the answers about this deep within yourself between you and your own personal intuition talking to you. So I hope this reading resonated with you guys. One last thing that I do want to say is that there are a lot of things that we call truth out there, but only you know what is your truth and the truth to this situation. So the best thing to do, according to those who picked this, sorry, according to this pile, is to do your best to just navigate these stormy seas and believe and visualize things coming to fruition, but remain grounded and protect yourself if you feel the need to because your intuition is definitely bang on right now so listen to it so thanks guys for pile number one i hope that resonated with you we are going to move on to pile number two which is the moonstone so what is the current energy around your person right now poseidon storms ahead Reevaluation, observation, reflection, and breathe. So this person may or may not see it coming, but they are either undergoing right now or about to undergo a very stormy period that is going to cause them to take a pause and a bit of a time out as they reevaluate and observe and reflect on their life. They may find themselves in a, 
a storm of, I'm not going to swear, but a crap storm only because of things that they themselves have done to set it into motion. And this might give them a chance to take a, a step back and finally take a look at their life in general and see where they are now. Because storms at times are unpredictable, but sometimes they're a product of what we create through our choices. So let's get a little bit more detail in regards to these storms ahead and how this affects your connection right now. So what does this person think of when it comes to you? How is this affecting you? Risky business, playing with fire. So because of these storms ahead, this is a very big caution to those who pick this pile that if you are going to engage with this person right now, you yourself potentially could end up in their storm or you could be a part of their storm because right now this person is not sure whatsoever in regards to anything in their life right now and where things can go. So by getting involved with them and by them getting involved with you, it's risky business. This person, I feel strongly, doesn't want to hurt you. And perhaps this person might have made it clear to whoever, whoever's watching this that they are not the best fit for you right now. And they don't know perhaps where they're going and where they want to be. And that by you getting involved with them and by them getting involved with you, they're taking a, a very big risk here. And somebody could get burnt in regards to possibly heartbreak later on down the line. And at the same time, you don't want to be caught off guard with any possible tricks that this person might have up their sleeve. So let's see how else, what, what other area of life is this affecting your person in right now in regards to this risky business? So we have a grand trine, blessings. So grand trines are easy flowing energy between different planetary energies and they usually happen in the same element for example earth air fire and water so whatever the storm ahead is whatever this person has to reflect on and has to reevaluate and figure out where they want to go it will eventually <clears throat> bring them blessings if they are open to these blessings because this will give them a chance to figure their own stuff out that can possibly eliminate this risk and have it compensated with things flowing easily again. But right now they're on shaky ground, even though shaky ground isn't on these cards. I just feel so strongly shaky ground, shaky ground because of the storms ahead and the fact that they're already reflecting. So right now might not be the best time to try to pursue this because you might get caught up, sorry, caught up in this. But at the end of it all, once this person goes through this, there are blessings to be found through this process. So let's get some advice for you watching from Spirit. What can help you navigate this connection at this time? Treasure Island. So the more you feel like this connection is a blessing as opposed to a curse, the easier things will be. The more you tell yourself that you are getting exactly what you need right now, even if you're getting silence from this person. You need to believe as much as you can in your heart that your life is a blessing, what you have in your life is a treasure, and that this relationship is a treasure as well, that you should value it, even though it might not be exactly what you want and how you want it. It's always important to look for the good in things. And sometimes situations look really dark and really bleak, but there's always a positive side to a connection that is not the easiest to navigate because there's a lot to be learned right now. So there are treasures to be discovered here, whether they're in w yourself or within this connection. And let's get another card. Oops. Extremes. So this is definitely, this card got burnt from some sage. This is definitely a situation where it's not the easiest to navigate. I have a feeling whoever's watching this goes from these feelings of, wow, this is amazing. This is so great. This is everything I ever wanted to, I need to have this. I have to have this to, to amazing, strong moments of passion to possibly rage and contempt and resentment with, with, with these two cards here. I really feel like it's a total 
polar opposite. So it's very important to do your best to stay as, as even level as possible, regardless of whatever might hit you along the way. Let's get another message for you in regards to how this connection is affecting you in the love department. Okay, you see that? You can't make that up enraptured web of desire and extremes so you are very much into this person and the fact that this is actually bringing forth a risk could be very attractive to whoever is watching and let's get another card how do we deal with this web of desire we look for the truth we do our best to allow that mask that other people wear to fall away and you open your eyes to what's really going on so if you can do your best to disconnect from this web of desire where you feel like you're so consumed and enraptured and strongly want to be with this person and actually see the situation for what it is, this will help you as your purse that navigates these storms. You'll see the truth. You'll see things differently. This will also help you in regards to this card here, Treasure Island, because the more we look for good things, the more we find them. The more we look for negative things, the more we find those. But in order to balance the extremities here, the truth will come out. So look for it, pay attention to it, believe what you see. This is an amazing, amazing, amazing card because if there was ever any confusion or any situations that were causing you to be really unsure about where you stand, where you might feel like somebody has been wearing a mask, this is where the mask falls off and the truth comes clear. So all you need to do is take yourself out of this web of desire and, and pay attention to what's in front of you. And it, it'll just be very easy for you to get the clarity that you need that can help you moving forward while you wait this out if this is something that you want to do. But I also don't mean wait literally. I mean, you have to go on with your life. But this is just to give you some insight as to where your person is at right now. So I hope this reading resonated with those who picked pile number two. We are going to move on to pile number three, the Rose Quartz. So what is the current energy around those of you that have picked pile number three? Sorry, around your person. <clears throat> Rays of light illumination. And love in the air. New life, vulnerability, and effort. So whoever picked this pile, I feel like your person has undergone this major point of transformation. Perhaps you have been in separation and being away from you has made them realize a lot of things. Or perhaps this illumination could have nothing to do with you, but just in regards to their own life where they needed this to happen in order for them to gain some clarity in a different area of their life that will help connect them to their connection with you because we have love in the air, new life, vulnerability, sorry, vulnerability and effort. So whatever's going on with this person, whatever rays of light have been illuminating them, it's bringing forth a, a new, new feelings of love where new life can, can, can be birthed, where they, this person is vulnerable. This person is in a very emotional state where they want to bring forth an effort and see where this can go. So let's see how this is affecting them when they think of you in regards to your connection right now. Empowerment, taming the beast within. <laughs> so some of them might really want to act on these feelings of love, but they might be holding themselves back. They might feel like maybe the time isn't right right now and that if they do, this might possibly give away some of their power and since they've just recently been illuminated I feel like they're very strongly holding on to this vibration of love in the air and it's making them feel empowered and I feel like this person has a lot more self-control when it comes to things in their life that might have negatively been affecting your connection and they might be working on this right now to tame these urges within that can actually do more harm to your connection than good which is so far very positive so I'm just going to move these cards out of the way and pull another card just to see yes empowerment and taming the beast within is how they're feeling in regards to their connection with you but let's see in what area of life is this affecting the connection or what, what area is this affecting the connection? So we have the eighth house endings and beginnings. 
Okay, so for some of you watching this, your person has undergone, I said transformation at the beginning, and here we have the eighth house. So let me break this down. The eighth house, yes, it's all about transformations in astrology. You want the keywords? I'll give them to you now. Sex, death, taxes, transformation, metamorphosis, endings and beginnings, other people's resources, inheritances, the occult, taboo, secrets. But it really does, especially in this deck, represent endings and beginnings. So what's beautiful about that is that it not only is it very deep, it also is the house of Scorpio. So there could be so much depth to this connection and so much illumination going on where this person really could have had a complete rebirth in regards to your connection where all of a sudden they feel empowered and they feel like they want to move forward, but they don't want to move forward too quickly because perhaps this is not the first time around and in the past things didn't work out well and it had to end in order for them to receive this illumination, in order for them to get to the, the darkness and the depth of the situation for the light to come in, for the new life to come in and for them to regain their empowerment. But the eighth house is a very, very complicated house. It's a very, very deep house as well. So this is an intimate house. This person holds you in a very, very intimate place. And this connection is not all hearts and candies. This is something that runs very, very deep. You trigger a lot in this person. You trigger a lot that other people don't. You share things with this person that other people would never even have a chance to get close to. This person lets you in whereas they might not let other people in. And the reason that this is coming up so strongly is because you're getting a chance at a rego and at a retake from what this is saying. So let's see some advice from Spirit in regards to helping you move forward with this connection. What do we got? A leg up. So there's definitely help along the way, whether it is this person who wants to come along and help you and make things easier between the two of you it could be or there could be somebody else that wants to help you but I do feel this is very strongly connected to your person so if this person is coming around and if they're making an effort and if they're trying to be there for you I would suggest that if this connection is something that you want to take the chance and to take the help it's not about being codependent it's about being completely independent and knowing when to rely on this person and when not to but whenever this card comes up, it means that it's no longer time to go at things alone anymore. So if this person is showing you signs, or if you're picking up on any signs, signs that they might be coming forward soon, this is also a confirmation to trust that and that if they do, to take it and see what they have to offer. Let's get another card to go with that. Self-love. So it's so important that whatever you do, it's important that you love yourself first. Do not allow anybody to lower your boundaries that you have set, whether it was way before you met this person or whether it was just this morning when you woke up and decided that you're changing certain things about your life. Self-love always comes first. So yes, take the help if help is offered to you, but make sure it will only better you in the long run and that it's not a band-aid effect because sometimes saying no is the best form of self-love. So make sure that whatever is being offered is something that you examine and ask yourself, will it end up helping you later on or will it end up hurting you later on? Because of this journey right now, it's all about loving yourself. It's great that, that your person is undergoing this massive illumination and transformation, but you have to stay in the vibration of self-love so that regardless of what happens here, it doesn't affect you. So let's get another message in regards to the love department as to how this is affecting you. We got taboo, secret cravings. And again, that connects to the eighth house. So this is a very strong relationship. This is a very strong connection where when it comes to things that are taboo and secret cravings, you you very much desire this person, but it's it's mutual. And when things are good between the two of you, you can really explore your desires together. And this is something that's very strongly 
on your mind right now and this might actually be bringing this person this person might be feeling your desire and because you're so strongly connected with the eighth house they may be feeling it even if you're not in contact right now and this is helping bringing them forward this is connecting you guys literally on like a 5d reality and let's get one more card on um how to clarify the taboo and secret cravings and what can help you so it's all about starting the, the self-love journey is about being happy alone. You hold the key to your happiness. You have to find a way to make yourself feel good with or without this help and regardless of whether this person is in your life or not. So yes, it's totally important to love yourself and it's absolutely fine to have secret cravings and to have such a strong desire for somebody, but it really does start with you in the self-love department and knowing that regardless of what happens with this person, if they come forward or not, that you focus on yourself and find things in your own life that make you happy, that make you feel like you love yourself without having to rely on your person or anyone else for that matter. So I hope these readings resonated with you all. I wish you guys a beautiful day. Thank you so much. Sorry. Thank you so much for watching. And if you have any questions or if you're interested in the decks, please know that all of the information will be down below. Thanks, guys. Bye.